Hey guys, it's Average and welcome back to the channel. Yes, we're looking at a very different starting camera today because we're in possibly the biggest moving object in Flight Sim right now. This is three times longer than a 747. It is Zeppelin time. <laughs> the L128, or the LZ 128 Zeppelin. Graf Zeppelin? Hindenburg? Yes, exactly that airship. Now, this thing is a monster made by Red Wing and... This thing is insane. It costs £25, which is not a terrible price. And whilst this is not something I will fly every day, this is a phenomenal piece of living history. We're going to take a look. In fact, we're going to go first in here. It's doing some automatic calculations. And yes, you can see people there bringing stuff up. This is all part of the aircraft. This is insane, right? So we'll go outside here as the cameras adjust to where we are. Because dear God. Oh, God. Ah. Uh, Let's get above the ground, because this is getting very confused. Um, uh, okay, let's slow this camera down, shall we? There's a lot to go over with this. This is less going to be a review, more of a... We're going to take a look at all these features, because there are an awful lot of them. An awful lot of them. Are these normal modern cars? These are normal modern cars. Okay, not sure why these are here. Here's our nose docking tower. Uh, which is in position in front of us, which is what we'd technically be mount, uh, docked to there. Technically, that pin would be in the doodah on the top there. That's how it would be docked. It'd be moved into position by all those people down there. Which appear to not exist from this angle. Interesting. Oh, no, they're below the ground. That's, that's awkward for them, admittedly. Right, let's go on board. And we'll take a quick look around and we'll do things a bit more detailed. I think right now... It's confused as to where it is because it's turning siding that it's at ground level. So we'll just fix our gear situation. There we go. Boom. And all the people were happy ever after. Right. I'll slow us down here. So as you can see, all these people holding our lines, which is already impressive enough. This thing has like 32 plus uh, AI people. You can actually operate inside the vehicle. So we have our captain, we have our officer of the watch. Well, we have officer of the watch here. We have the helmsman or the rudderman, the elevator man here. This is our kind of steering compartment we'll operate the airship from. And all this works. Here's the navigator's compartment and radio man's room. And in the back here, we have the captain's kind of ready area. We have the up ladder here into the wireless room. And we talk about the uh, the Dornier X being amazing living history. It ain't got nothing on this. Again, I might not fly this thing very often. Yeah, mail room. <laughs> it's got the front of the uh, airship here. Of course, the gas bags are all around us here. Those are what, of course, keep this thing aloft. And we have these various compartments here for crew quarters. Of course, this thing's flying for multiple days during transatlantic flights. It was essentially an airliner that was very slow and fat. Gas storage tanks here. Oh, so I think we've gone past where you can actually view in the aircraft here. I'll go forward a little bit to see if it actually does more. I don't think it does. Right, we'll head back towards the... There's one of the big gas bags in front of us. Now, here we are. And these are all cabins. This is the heavy version. The light version strips away a lot of the interior features. Uh, but this is the heavy Mm -hmm. So your sim will struggle. And I'm telling you that through straight, you know, straight teeth. Your sim will struggle. Because you've got four cabins. And in many cases, I think a lot of these things open. That one doesn't. It could well be the camera I'm using as well that could do it. But we are inside the passenger compartments of a down Zeppelin. Uh-huh. Yeah. This is a whole Zeppelin. Yeah, I think these are being limited by the camera I'm in right now rather than anything else. But as you can see, oh, that's just an empty room there. Straight up cabin. We have up here the lounge with a specially made piano. Extra lightweight, 168 kilos for a grand piano. I believe it was uh, aluminium covered in pigskin or cowskin. But it was aluminium. Original for its time, very unique. And we're at a weird angle here. You'll forgive that in a second. But we have people looking at it from the observation windows here. A very Prussian-looking chap here. He looks definitely like an artist. 
Possibly not an Austrian one though. Definitely not an Austrian painter. Let's go this way. We'll go downstairs. Another observation deck on this side. Honestly, just flying around this thing is almost worth the pay. Because it's an incredible piece of design. Okay, so we have compartments here. What's through here? This is a bathroom. Important to have those. There's an empty room there. Windows down there. This is boarding stairs there. So it'll be this other side here. I suspect it will take us down to the actual main lounge. The bar. The ashram. Through here. And with the bar itself. It's a fantastic view for the bartender of being able to look down at everything. Hello. Such a beautiful 30s design, by the way, to all these elements. Absolutely stunning. Gondola access. Nothing there. Through here, we'll have the actual bar area. And again, with more visibility outside. But this is a truly stunning piece of design. I'm genuinely impressed by what they created from this because... This is wild. In fact, let's head back inside. We'll quickly go to our control tablet, which is across here. And we'll go and get the stairs down. So what we have in terms of our systems is a lot of this is automated in terms of how you operate the actual airship. So all systems are currently on. Getting started, please. Let's get everything started up here. Get to our menu front page here. So we're going to FX on, passengers are on. Uh, ready for takeoff, we will set soon. And these are our various line designations here. So we can call crew slash ready statuses. We can put them lines back up and down. Grab and catch them. So we can do that all at once as well if we need to. Showing who's doing what where. We can also navigate around the various stages of the aircraft here. So we can go to various locations like in the back here. And with a click of a button we are back in the cockpit. And we can go to the engine cars as well. Ah, very, very chap nice flying chap there. We control various engine functions from that. We'll go to the other locations here too. Right, back over here. I'm pretty sure I know there's a way to set down the... Okay, here's our CG and loading all done. Fuel sets, etc. Now, it does talk about having... Start maintenance operation. There we go. It does start talk about a premium version. I bought the only version available. Of course, on the uh, marketplace, this is what is available here. It's what we have. We can get reports from everyone here. We'll, we'll get reports. Please give me a general report. Nothing to report. Everything works normally. Everything is in order. Bursa can improve food. Give crew extra portions. Now, in many ways, ah, there we go. No problem, sir. Passenger list. We have a passenger list here. Clara Adams, Ralph Barnes. This is incredible for a flight sim aircraft. So many functions. It is truly insane. Here come the stairs, see? There's our boarding stairs for the aircraft, which should be down, of course. There'd be a way to access that. It'd be probably lower down here, once we're docked properly. But you could climb aboard there. There'd be steps up to those, and you could get on board. This for measuring wind, of course, and wind direction. It's phenomenal, isn't it, in terms of what they've created here. I'm actually blown away. I haven't been paid for this. I bought this myself, just for record, in case I sound like I'm too excited by this. But it truly is a fantastic piece of equipment. Absolutely love it. Kind of insane, actually. So here's our uh, chief engineer. We've got our various flight status, uh, statuses here. We can click on various functions. What the qualification is for some of them to actually work, I don't know. Because some of them do not work all the time. Some of these are not operational yet. Uh, we can, of course, raise the antennas. We've got our chief uh, rigger. So you can set the aircraft for its uh, positioning. So we can cast off all ropes. We can cast off some of them, which is easy enough. We'll leave those for now. There's electrical chief, we've got a, a various generator functions. Radio chief, we can get weather reports, uh, get our position fixes, send out mayday signals. 
mechanics. We can work on the engines if we need to. Heck, we can shut them down in flight and work on them. Okay, so everything's good here. So I believe if we've been, where is it? Chief Steward. Okay, expedited, that's closed. Okay, we're good to go there. So we're going to, Dezephan is in startup mode. So watch officer is going to get told to do that. Prepare for takeoff. Prepare for takeoff. And we're going to make sure we set ourselves, to, we're in startup mode. Ready for takeoff. Ready for takeoff. Everyone's preparing themselves here. What I'm looking for here, elevator man. Uh, da, 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 da. Not all these function yet. It, they're, they're all contextually operational in most cases. This is the chief engineer here. He's managing our ground balancing already. So that's good there. Okay, so. I don't know half these functions because some of them I even I don't know yet. This is an incredible complex aircraft. The manual for context is 140 pages long. That includes history. So I am jumping some steps around here while I play with this because I'd have to study this for weeks just to function properly and well. We are going to hit the old magic control E because I'm feeling the vibe. Getting our system are all on. So we're going to cast off our lines here and get ourselves ready to depart. So I'm looking for here. I'm looking for menu. There we are. Mooring. We're going to go ready for takeoff. We are on easy mode, of course. So I'm turning off 3D passengers just for performance issues right now. Engines to all. Release the front cone. Roger. Cast off the front moorings. Roger. Cast they will cast those lines off and we're going to fall over movies. because lift is not Roger. a thing. There we are. Bring the lines up. The front Fall up the front moving. Roger. Fall up the front Fall up the rear moving. So you see these lines coming up now? Roger. And whilst we do this, we're going to get some ballast off the uh, aircraft equally. And we are drifting backwards with the wind right now as we come up. The lines are away. So we're coming up. So we're going to start these engines moving here. Let's bring the idles up to forward slow. All ahead, slow. Why isn't one coming up? That's because it's attached to my throttle quadrant, so I'm going to have to bring it up manually. So our engines are functioning here on the Zeppelin. This big beast that it is. We've got an issue on... Nope, they're all operational here. Okay. Okay, now in terms of actual navigation and steering, we can do it ourselves or we can give it orders. We're going to give it ourselves for now. So right now I'm going to pull my wheel across here to full deflection. And we're still turning. We have to give it more power. So uh, let's go for all ahead, shall we? Has this functioned? We're still drifting backwards. The wind might be a little strong for us right now. We're certainly not into a headwind. Oh, we stopped moving. That's a good start. And we're going to go forwards. We're starting to... Okay, yes, we're going forwards. So it's the important beginnings of these things. <laughs> it's incredibly complicated. So whilst we're here, we'll go back. We'll start to get ourselves some more lift as well. Each one of these is 100 kilos we're trying to get rid of here. So we'll ditch the water ballast for most of these uh, once it starts rising. And you'll notice how quickly we're starting to come up now. You can see our trimming positions. Now we can operate the elevator man's uh, controls here. We get five degrees nose up and nose down with this, so we can actually start to raise the nose slightly. This is, of course, our basic mode tablet. It gives us a little bit of information in terms of seeing straight up our information. We can see these readouts on the various stations of the aircraft, but obviously being one person, not having a crew beyond these AI crew. Uh, this helps us actually see what this information is, and it's giving us our motor statuses, Getting our altitude, our trim position. Of course, we're getting our speed, which is climbing, and our heading. So we have all the data we need. We can actually accelerate things as well if we want to. By hitting that button at the top, it will speed everything up for us nice and easy. So we'll go, we'll do some more climbing here. We'll take off the nose more. And we're going very fast, 100 kilometers an hour. That's not 
normal. Uh, we are obviously motoring along here. Let's command uh, reduce throttle to half ahead. See if we can gain some altitude. 47, 48. We are climbing. This is with our five degree nose up. We're commanding on the aircraft. And this is huge. Yes. Look at that shadow we're casting on the earth. It is a monstrous beast of an aircraft. And it's a very weird way to actually go around this universe. We're commanding some rudder input here. We start to turn. Which way is the lake? There we go. We're going that way. So we'll, we'll command this side. We'll come around 180 degrees. I'll try and bring it back to the airfield if we're lucky. Whether that works or not is another matter. It could take a while. Turning a Zeppelin's not easy. <laughs> They're quite big. I suppose I could command the engines on one side to uh, to throttle back. Which would help. Uh, if I knew which ones one through four were. <laughs> it is a very wild experience. I, I enjoy this thing so much. It's so weird. It's crazy. And it has the nicest little functions you wouldn't believe. You know what? I think this is a bit too much effort telling it where to go. So I'm just going to move us across here. Okay, no. Go away, speaking tube. Uh, da, 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 da. Orders. Hello. I'd like us to... Um, what's our current heading? Use this for reference. 348. So we're almost looking for 180. So we'll go for due south, please. And commanding heading... We start to follow heading. Warning, we are tilting dangerously upwards. We're tilting dangerously upwards, are we? Oh. I need to release gas. We are tilting dangerously yeah, 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 yeah. Release gas from cells one, two, and three. We are tilting dangerously upwards. Oopsie. Command elevators down. Dangerously upwards. Yes, I can tell that. Uh, let's release rear ballast. In fact, we'll drop some emergency ballast for 500 kilos. That should bring the Warning. rear up. Yes, thank you for the warnings, Bob. Or Hans, in this case. Come on. We should be able to command gas release from there. We should bring our nose down. Oh, yeah, it's very heavy on the performance here. Oh, God, we're going down fast. Well, we're landing. <laughs> to think of it, it's quick. We crashed the craft, craft Zeppelin. Oh, bother. Okay. So that is our journey uh, right now. Um, we have crashed, crashed a Zeppelin. I'm going through some trees. This is awkward. Um, as you can tell, it is complicated to operate. And we're in a field somewhere near Friedrichshaven. And uh, Friedrichshafen even. And I'm now coming to rest by a small farm. After humping that small farm with my airship. <laughs> I'm not quite ready to be an airship pirate, I don't think. That was a life goal of mine growing up. Um, was to be a, a, a beautiful, mysterious uh, airship pirate captain. And uh, sail the skies above the Aegean uh, pirating booty. But apparently that is not to be my destiny, as our airship's still going. Can we slow... Okay, this is a bit odd. Uh, the throttles are all at zero. We're, we're now going faster than we were before. This is this is hilarious. Like I said, it's complicated, it is difficult, and it is a pig. But it is fascinating to actually study the material behind this and to actually operate it. So, you know what, can you even just get us off the ground? That would be a good start. Ditch some more ballast. If we can get it to come up a little bit, maybe. Be a good start. Oh, we are starting to drift up slowly but surely. It's a miracle. There we go. Ditch some fuel ballast as well. Get the airship to come up again. Hey, and it's we're almost actually on course. So this actually worked out surprisingly. We destroyed three farms, but I mean, who's counting? I mean. Worst things are to come. Only 10 years after this thing started flying. So what's the difference? Anyway. <laughs> so the AI there is taking control of our rudder operations as uh, we look through some of these more interesting parts here. So, of course, we can control all these. We control docking, of course. It's going to take you a long time to do any kind of flight in this from A to B. 
it is complicated. But the one thing I'll show you before we go, because I didn't want to make this too long, but I wanted to do a bit more of a let's play rather than anything else with the aircraft. We could open these drawers and pull out freaking maps of you know Germany or the world and other things. I'm not kidding. You could get pens too. How do I get that again? Come on, Germany North. No, we don't want Germany North. We want Germany All. So we'll get rid of that. And we'll go backwards now. That's fine. We can do drift stuff, I'm pretty sure. I know I can click those. I don't know how to actually do them. Oh, we opened a book. I don't know how it wants me to draw, but I'm pretty sure there's ways to draw things. Which is... What does that do? Delete stuff. Drift draw size. Something draw size. It's not very clear. These functions are very much written and created in-house. And they're wild. What is this? Oh, we have control frequencies here. We can actually set uh, the height. We're sending a time control ballast things. Just tons of functions. It's kind of amazing. It's so ridiculously complicated. We're going backwards at a set. I... This is odd. I'm not sure why this is happening, but we are in fact now the world's first reverse Zeppelin. <laughs> I had no pretensions of being competent with this thing, so we're about to destroy a dwarf. But, um. In Kleiner Dwarf. Yes. No, bye bye, dwarf. Goodbye, village. Bye bye. Flattened by the ground. Oh, oh. Uh. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's complicated, it's busy, and it's, it's currently killing a house. Um. Not many aircraft in flight, so we'll do that. I'm not sure why we're going backwards at such speed either. That is definitely not expected. I'm pretty sure not by design. I'm going to full throttle, see if it takes us forward. Something's glitched out. But you know what? I'm actually living for this sort of chaos. It's okay. There is so much to play with this in this aircraft, and it is all beyond my abilities. But honestly, £25 for this level of insane... We're still going backwards. We're still going backwards at quite a clip here. 87 kilometers an hour backwards. I think we're just setting a Zeppelin speed record for a reverse flight. Because there's no wind like this today. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I love it. Uh, just why don't you go buy it? Just playing around inside, looking at all the scenery and the, the features and... Working out how to control some, even some of these systems in this thing are insanity. There is no easy mode to this. This is not some sort of hop in and go for it. You're not going to go anywhere fast or in a hurry. You may even go through the German countryside backwards as we flip a Zeppelin. Oh, God. Oh, it's horrific. Oh, wow. Um, I. Physics. Dear Lord. Uh, it's like the Titanic, but worse. Looks like the Hindenburg wasn't enough for me as we're going to fly upside down here. We're actually upside down. Yeah, we're, we're upside down now. That's a thing. Ah, uh, yeah, we're, 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 we're upside down. Why am I still recording? Because this is too good to not record. This is far too good to not record. I am backwards upside down in a Zeppelin. I'm doing Zeppelin aerobatics. This is the first. Crap that happens in the simulator, I swear. No, I love this thing and I'm having the most fun right now that I don't even want to stop recording, but I'm going to have to because I have to unscrew all of this and then try and do it again. I wasn't expecting to provide you guys with a comprehensive how-to, but I was hopefully giving you a teaser of why I think this is a great idea to spend your money on. I do not feel like I wasted a penny. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye.